What's going on guys? I'm assuming you all know why I'm making a video today and it's of course about the new Mac lineup and refresh of the iMac uh, the upcoming Mac Pro in August I'm not sure if it'll be early August or late August and the new trackpad and battery charger okay um, I was reading about this battery charger that Apple came out with and you know I was kidding around with DRB UK this morning saying you know I I love Apple but you know 30 bucks for a battery charger wow you know and I showed him one that well, a Duracell battery charger for like nine bucks on Amazon that charged you know did the same thing and you know I, I was joking with him back and forth and he said he ordered it because it's got Apple magic you know and I was reading this article and um, credit to him DRB UK I believe you is right I believe it does have a little bit of Apple magic in it because you can read the article, but it makes a few little good little points about how it uses power and how it's the batteries are supposed to actually hold long charges and how it's supposed to be greener. But the main point it made is that Apple now sells the whole widget. You know, it says, for example, you can buy a computer, a mouse, a keyboard, a magic trackpad, batteries, and battery charger all from Apple. And I think that's the more important part. So I think I am going to buy this charger, just so I can have the whole widget, you know? Um, but anyways, that's, that's, I just wanted to, to share that little, little tidbit with you that uh, I was kidding with DRB UK saying it's just a battery charger, and usually it's vice versa. I'm the one defending the Apple products, you know? But I was in a flaky mood this morning, and uh, he said, hey, you know, it's got Apple Magic in it. And, you know, he was laughing, but he was right. It sure as heck does, you know? So, uh... It totally is worth it because there's other battery chargers out there that are cheaper and more expensive. But, you know, all kidding aside, Apple usually makes their products better than most people. So if you're going to get a battery charger, why not spend the 29 bucks and get an Apple battery charger and just have everything Apple? You know, that could be a good little plus for some people. Some people like to have the whole set, you know. Okay, so let's, I'm not going to go to the Apple website because there's really not much to look at. I'm not real sure of the specs. We can go to my website, ericmeek.com. I have the specs posted there. So, the thing is with the IMAX now, it seems, um, this is the quad-core Mac Pro uh, specs. I will go, to, for benefit of the doubt, I will go to Apple.com and go to the IMAX page. That way I won't misquote any new specs. And I'm sure the Apple Store is really getting hit hard today, you know, as far as traffic goes. Okay, so now you got the 21 and a half inch and the 27 inch. Of course, they have the same thing as they was before, the 27 inch 2.8 i7, the 27 inch um, i5, actually, and i7. So we'll select that first. This is the ones that have probably changed the least, the i5s and the i7s, just like before. Um, but this time, you get a uh, 5750 um, graphics card, okay? But the iMacs that have changed the most are the ones below the i5s and i7s. You can now get a 27-inch 3.2 core i3, which is, for those of you that don't know what the advantage of an i3 over a core 2 duo is, uh, while an i3 is two cores, not unlike a core 2 duo, the i3 has four threads. So it will it will act like it has four four cores, even though it technically don't have four physical cores. It has four cores two physical cores and four threads. So um, you will see four, if you're using menu meters or whatever, you will see like you got four cores up there, even though technically it's not, you know, hardware-wise, four cores. Um, so the Core i3 3.2, um, you also get four gigs of, of RAM, two two-gig memory stick. This is all stock now, okay? You get the 27-inch Core i3 3.2, 2560 by 1440 resolution, four gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, ATI Radeon 5670, okay, uh, for $16.99. Come on, guys. Seriously, a 27-inch 3.2 Core i3 with 4 gigs of RAM, an ATI 5670, and a 1 terabyte hard drive. $16.99. That's unbelievable for, for Apple. That's that is excellent. I mean, come on, seriously, guys. Apple's getting into a realm now to where their their hardware is getting competitively priced for what you get, which they always have been, but more so lately. 
And I want to point out on the 27-inch quad core, you get the 57, seven, uh, 5750 with 1 gig of RAM on the GPU. The 27-inch i3 is a 5670 with 512 megabits of RAM, whereas the 27-inch i5 or i7 is the 5750 with 1 gig of RAM on the GPU. So for 2000 bucks, you get the uh, i5, 4 gigs of RAM, a terabyte hard drive, the 5750 with 1 gig of RAM, and, you know, you get your keyboard, magic, the nice little wireless keyboard, and magic mouse, I think, all for uh, 1999 They also offer a 21-inch, 3.2 Intel Core i3, 4 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte hard drive, a Radeon 5670, all for 1499 also, you can get a 21 and a half inch 3.06 Core i3, 1920 20 by 1080, 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gig hard drive, 4670 with 256 megabytes for 1200 bucks. So seriously, guys, these are excellent, excellent upgrades, excellent value for the money for what they're asking for this. Everybody can always build one cheaper or find some cheap-ass PC cheaper. Yes, you always can. But for what you get, you're getting yourself in the Apple ecosystem. You're getting yourself with the wonderful Apple's customer service and the wonderful Apple hardware and the wonderful Apple software. This is not just some clunked-together PC that I've put together trying to save some money, okay? This is actually a decently priced all-in-one for what you get. No other all-in-one on the planet can come close to this. A 27-inch 2560 by 1440 with 4 gigs of RAM and a terabyte hard drive and a 5670? 1600, 1700 bucks? You guys, you think, you think 1700 bucks for a Core i3? 4 gigs of RAM and a terabyte hard drive with just a 5670? But you gotta think, you're getting a 27-inch display with that. You price them out separately and you're... This is an unbelievable value, okay? So, I'm not going to talk too much about the Mac Pros. Everybody knows the Mac Pros, or new Mac Pros are coming in August. They're either going to be quad-core, six-core, or 12-core. I'm pretty sure. Maybe they won't go quad-core, and it'll just be six and 12. But from what I'm hearing, we might have the choice of quad-core, six-cores, and 12-cores, uh, um, 12 yeah. 12 cores for 49.99, okay? 12 fucking cores. Come on, don't the sound of that just make you want to cream your shorts? 12 cores, guys. Come on, you know what that equals? Do the math. 12 and 12 is what? 20 fucking 4. Hallelujah. 24 fucking cores or threads or whatever you want to say. You can actually get a Radeon 58, whatever the, what is the Radeon, fit? let me look, let me, let's go back. Let's look at the specs here. Yep, you can get a quad core Mac Pro for $24.99, or you can get a six core, I think. Yep, here we go. One, you can get one 3.2 quad core, or one 3.336 core, or two 2.666 cores equals 12 cores. Wow. Two 2.936 core Intel Xeon 5670 processors of 12 cores. And two ATI Radeon HD 5770s with 1 gig of GDDR5 memory. Two. Two ATI Radeon 5770s or one H ATI Radeon 5870. Would you rather have two 5770s or one 5870? And I don't think you're going to be able to do crossfire and stuff with these. So unless you have many displays, several displays you're wanting to run, I suggest instead of the two 5770s, you get the one 5870 with one gig of memory. Up to 32 gigs of RAM. Now you can get up to four 512 gig solid state drives. Four. Four 500 gig solid state drives is an option or SSDs. Okay, this is expensive. Okay. A 12-core machine with 24 threads for $5,000. Nobody should be spending that kind of money for a computer that they're just going to set at home and check email, surf the web, and do the occasional video for YouTube. These are machines meant for serious people with serious professions that have serious work. If you're going to be encoding hours and hours of video, if you're going to be rendering uh, hours and hours of 3D, this is the machine for you. Not if you're a gamer, okay? No game is going to accept 12 cores. 
If you're a gamer and you have to have a Mac Pro, I suggest the quad-core Mac Pro with the 5870. That'd be a beautiful gaming machine, and you'll get it for 2500 bucks. Or the i7 or i5 27-inch iMac if you want that big display. There's other options for gamers besides the 12-core. This 12-core is really for a niche market. Like I said, it's for serious, serious individuals. And at the first year, I'm going to get me one. <laughs> I know that's totally contradicting everything that I had just now said. you know. But I'm an Apple fanatic. That's what I do. So I do do more 3D work than the average consumer. I do more video encoding than the average consumer. I do more website work, because I have a few websites I maintain than the average consumer. I do more than, mo than, than, than the average consumer. I play games with Steam and stuff. So I will take advantage of it more than a lot of people that just, you know, generally use the computer from day to day. I won't need it as much as some industry professionals. No way. The machine will probably, a lot of it will be wasted. You know, the power will be wasted for the stuff that I do because it won't be used. But I gotta have one. 12 cores and 24 threads. Come February, I'm buying me one of those bitches. I'm gonna stick my 20-inch display on it, and I'm gonna rock it out. You know, I'll buy a bigger display when I can afford it, but I'll use my 27-inch i7 iMac for general purpose and movies and stuff like that, and I'll use my 12-core, 24-thread Mac Pro to kick some ass on video encoding and stuff. But that's not what this video is about. Okay, that's just my future plans. I'm, I, I digress. I'm rambling. The main thing I wanted to go over was the new things that Apple's come out with. So we all know that they're coming out with the new Mac Pros, and they have unbelievable specs if you're willing to pay for it, just like the iMac has unbelievable specs at an unbelievable price, okay? That's what that's my opinion. They just released the Mac Mini, which now has HDMI, okay? I'm, I'm hearing rumors of an 11.6-inch MacBook Air, which I would have to have. 11.6 inches would just be beautiful, okay? Uh, the MacBook Pros now have i3s. Of course, you can still get Core 2 Duos in the MacBooks and stuff, but Apple is moving away from this two-core, two-thread type of deal. Pretty soon, it's going to be two core, four threads all the way across their lineup before too long. It looks like that's the direction they're heading in, and they're really embracing these SSDs, too. So, uh, oh, the Magic Trackpad. We didn't even talk about the Magic Trackpad, did we? They got a new trackpad out, which I ordered this morning at 8 o'clock as soon as I could. So let's go to the store, and it's just a, tra a, a trackpad's all it is, as you can see right here. This is it. And probably nothing special, as you can see. It's about the size of, let me, let me go back, it's about the size of the keyboard, and actually not that wide. Jesus, it looks like it's just about the size of the number pad on a full-size keyboard. Maybe a little bit wider than a number pad on a full-size keyboard. It looks a little bit shy of halfway as big as a mini keyboard for the iMac. I got this little mini keyboard here, if I can find it, that come with it. I use my Tactile Pro, but I got this little mini keyboard here. And as you can see by the picture, it looks like the trackpad ain't but about that big. On this from like maybe the number four over. So it's gonna it's not gonna be real big. It's gonna be maybe two, three times the size of a notebook trackpad. So uh it's gonna sit right on your desk real neatly and it's gonna have that's what I wanted. I was been looking for a way for years to get rid of my mouse on all things except graphic design, video editing, and three D work. Okay. I, that's all I want my mouse for. Other than that, it's just it's just bothersome, to be honest with you. And if this Magic Trackpad works anyway like I think it's going to work, then I'm totally going to stop using my mouse except for real work. You know, as far as browsing the web and just doing general things on my computer, I'm just going to sit over here and use my trackpad because you can scroll with two fingers probably, pinch and zoom, which you can't do with a mouse. So this is really going to eliminate... Uh, a lot of people's time and usage of a mouse, I think. I think with me, the, the amount that I use my mouse is going to be cut by 35-40% when I in, get this Magic Trackpad. I think I'll be using my mouse 40% less when I get this Magic Trackpad. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's baby steps. It's Apple's way of getting its desktop users used to touch. Okay? Baby steps. The implications of this are huge for the future, but we're not going to go there right now, okay? So I have mine ordered, and of course we'll do an unboxing when I get it. I ordered it really early this morning, so I should get them along with everybody else. Uh, 
So what does this mean? So let's think about this. The new iPhone 4, the new iPad that just came out not long ago, okay? We got the new Mac Minis, we got new iMacs, we got new Mac Pros coming in just a few days. We got the, the new Magic Mouse that happened last year, I think, and the Magic Trackpad, okay? We also have a music event coming up later this year in a few months which is going to introduce new iPods, okay? So let's really put into perspective what Apple has been doing for the tech community here lately, from the iPad to the new iPhone to the Mac Minis and the iMac, new iMacs, the refreshes of all these things, the, the upcoming new iPods, the new Magic Track Pads, all of these things, even mobile me updates. I'm not saying they haven't had their issues, but they are working their asses off, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, they are working their asses off. Come on, what other tech company? Seriously, Alienware, Dell, Falcon Northwest, Microsoft, what other tech company is innovating and releasing new products on such a solid and routine schedule as Apple? They're constantly upgrading and improving their technology, constantly innovating new devices like this trackpad, constantly creating new ecosystems around devices and new niches, constantly innovating the industry. I don't see any kind of innovation coming from anybody anywhere else, especially on the PC side. The PC side of the industry has grown stale. The only innovation I halfway see is in Google, and Google only innovates by copying people. They have their Android, and everybody will tell you Android is just a watered-down version of iOS. It's not as polished, it's not as good, and that's just the way it is. It may be more widespread, more people may use it, and it may get more, more market share as the years go by. All that may be true that in no way, shape, or form means it compares in any way to iOS 4 when it comes to polish and user experience, okay? Yes, these Apple products have their flaws, okay? But the flaws are not enough to, to cause me to not want to buy these products. I'm sorry, when I look at the PC industry, I just see stale, stale black and white bullshit. They don't know where they're headed, don't know where they're going. They all got their head up their ass and they have no clue what to fucking do next. So they're waiting on Apple to fucking do it so they'll know what to do. HP has a little bit of hope. They have this web OS. If they don't fuck it up, they have a little bit of hope. But given HP's track record, they'll probably fuck it up. So shame on you, PC industry. Shame on you. Where is the innovation? Where is the, the design? Where is the brilliance? When I look at Windows 7 and I hear about this, what is it? UDK or JDK zero day key or USB zero day key or whatever this big new bug they found in Windows is. It's been in Windows since Windows NT all the way through every version up until Windows 7. You know what Balmer said before Windows 7 come out? This is Windows 7 is what Vista should have been, is what he said. He said they're going to go over every single line of code and, 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 and go over and go through everything. And you're telling me this bug has been there since Windows NT? How much code does Windows 7 share with Windows NT, Windows 2000, Windows XP, whatever? How much code does Windows 7 share with these operating systems to where this same bug has been there throughout every single version? How much different do you believe me to think Windows 7 is from previous versions? Okay, has it gotten better? Yes, but there's no fix to this. This, this bug can compromise and run and get a rootkit to run on any machine. Any machine, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, because I'm not big on the Windows tech side of things anymore. Um, this is, can, this machine can, be, any machine can be compromised any machine. And now that there's a proof of concept out there, it's just a matter of time before these things start popping up because it's already happened once on the like, Simmons or whatever it was. And this is a serious, serious, serious bug. A serious bug that can compromise, allow any and all machines to be compromised. Any and all machines. People can get it to run any application they want. Okay? This is a serious issue. And I'm supposed to buy Windows 7? 
Is that what they want? Yeah, come over to Windows 7, even though we got all these exploits that's been in our operating system for years, and this one is a serious bug that can cause some serious freaking problems, and I don't know if we can fix it. But still, come on over. No, 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 we're not innovating on anything. We've got our little Windows 7 from foam project, but that's about the only thing we're, we're working on. We're about as interesting as a bag of salt, okay? That's the way I see Microsoft. Microsoft is about as interesting as a bag of fucking salt. Um, I, I, they just, they're just not appealing. They're boring, and I don't know. I don't know what's happened to them. I just, I don't know what's happened to them. But seriously, put this into perspective, guys. Everything that Apple's done over these past few years, <laughs> past decade, where's everybody else? It's un, it's unbelievable and it's amazing. And even you Apple haters. Or Apple biased people that that have their eye on Apple don't actually hate Apple, but they have their eye on Apple and kind of skeptical about getting into the whole Apple ecosystem because of some of the bullshit they've heard about how Apple's control freaks and this that and the other. You know, put that aside for a minute and look at what Apple is doing consistently. Isn't that a company you want to invest in and put your time into? A company you know is if there's any problems, you're going to get a problem fix. Even if they have to give you something free to make it work. They're constantly innovating, constantly updating their products. Ain't this the kind of company you want to invest your time, money, and work in? Because when I look at the PC side of things, I don't see nothing. And I don't see anything coming. I don't even, all I see are things are going. And that's my take on it, brothers. OS 10.